Ah, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. Well, it looks like the wet season set in and it's time to get serious about the projects that I've had on the back burner for a while in the shed. And the first one I'm going to attack is the biochar crusher. And I'll give you a bit of an update on where I'm at with it and what I'm going to do. For those of you who are not familiar with this project and those of you who haven't seen it for a while, this is where we're up to. Since I last worked on the biochar crusher, which was months ago, I have done a little bit in the last few months here and there when it really rained, but I've been too busy to really get into it. But I have made all the holes in the end plates uh, so I can mount the bearing plates, like this one is mounted on the end, but it'll have all the bolts in, of course. You can see here, this is the removable end so that I can get at the rotor inside. And the next thing I have to do is build the shaft. And I'm going to build that out of a piece of 50mm by 6mm wall and use inch and 3 8 shaft. And getting that straight will be a bit of a challenge. So I'll show you how I'm going to go about that. This is a shaft that I'm going to weld in each end of this heavy walled box section to form the shaft in the machine. One thing that will help is that the shaft measures 38 millimetres and the inside of the tube is very close. That will help a lot because I'll be able to drive it in. One bit of a difficulty is that inside just there there is a seam on the tube and I'm going to have to deal with that somehow. I need to cut the shaft to the appropriate length for each end. I put the shaft in the lathe and marked a straight line around it and it'll also help to make the end nice and smooth and round. And now I'm going to cut it off. Unfortunately the motor in my bandsaw is broken and I've got to fix it. So I'm going to have to use the cut off wheel on the little angle grinder. What I'm going to try is this what I've done and that is I've cut a keyway with the angle grinder. Well not really a keyway but like a keyway in the shaft and that is going to go down where that seam is and that'll let it go in otherwise somehow I've got to get that seam out and I just don't know how to go about that easily I mean it can be done but I don't know how to go about it easily the other thing I have to do is drill some holes through the wall of this box so that I can weld through the holes and onto the shaft to hold it in there so I'll drill those holes now I've welded a piece of shaft in one end of this and I've got it in the lathe and I'm turning it around with the lathe tool just scratching the corner of it and you can see two are even that one's got a little tiny scratch on it and so is this one I'd say it's out of true by maybe one thou which I think that's remarkably accurate considering the materials I'm using and the way I'm going about it so I'm quite happy with that I'll now fully weld up these plug welds and test it again fully welded the shaft now all right I'll run it in the lathe now and see if there's much hop in it and that if that's okay I don't know what I'm going to do if it isn't because quite frankly I don't know how I'd true it up after I've welded it all but it's fully welded now yes look there is a very slight hop in it now that it's fully welded but I think it's well within tolerances of what's acceptable I'll now have to get on to putting the other end of the shaft in and then we'll have to go about putting mounts on for the hammers. Before I weld this piece of shaft in, I'll put a hole in the centre with the centre drill and the reason for that is if ever I need to pull the bearing off, it's helpful so that you can fit the puller to the shaft and the bearing. I've just started the shaft in this end. I've lined the slot up where it's going to go with the seam in the pipe and now I'm going to show you how I put the last one in and that worked out okay. I'm not hitting this really hard on the anvil but I will have to check that it hasn't spread the end when I'm finished this. You can see that's gone in the full depth that it needs to go. I'll now tack these in and then check how they're going for accuracy.
One thing that I haven't mentioned, this shaft is 4140. <coughs> the trick with this is to not put too much weld in one place at one time. If you do that, if you fully weld up one side, you will definitely pull it out of all shape. I've got the shaft running in the lathe and it's running nice and true and accurate. So far we're doing really well with this. I've now got this end fully welded. Once it cools down I'll have to check that it's reasonably straight and then what I have to do is cut a keyway in this end because this is the drive end of the machine. I'm just doing a final check that it's pretty straight and it will come out good. I don't think I'm going to have any problem at all. There's a little tiny bit of hop at this end but it's really really small. I've started milling the keyway in the shaft and a proper milling machine you know a dedicated milling machine would be better but I haven't got one and I find this works okay. It's a bit of mucking about but it does work and it's way better than an angle grinder and a coal chisel. Anyway, I'm nearly on the last pass, so I'll do another pass and then I'll measure it and see how we are. Here I've got a piece of key steel and you can see it fits in there nice and tight. But it's not long enough. I'll actually, I've actually got some that's in a long length and I'll make up a proper key for it. These are just little ones that are in a packet but I think I'll use a long piece the full length of the keyway. You can see that the bearing still goes on. The end has, hasn't been expanded or anything and that'll all be okay. The next step now is to weld some double lots of flat bar, four of them along each side, staggered, and that will create a place to put the hammers. That about wraps up this edition of Farming Live Australia. It's getting dark. Thanks a lot for watching.